welcome back to another action figure review. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new, gorgeous CO exclusive, the Ruins of Scaro set, as based on the Dalek story, Destiny of the Daleks. So this set consists on a bomber Dalek and two brand new characters, which are the Mavellans, as seen in the story itself, which were the enemies of the Daleks within that story. So to begin with, like I usually do, before we actually look at the toys themselves, let's get the boring part out of the way and look at the box. As you know by now, the packaging is pretty much what you expect with these releases now. You have the white and blue style motif of the packaging, the TARDIS on the side, that lovely rebranded version of the 70s Doctor Who logo, the name of the set as well as it stating that this is a set based on the fourth Doctor's era, as well as a little red box stating that this is a character online exclusive instead of having the gold limited edition foil sticker that is known with the B&M sets. On the back of the box you have some information about the story itself, as well as a little bit of behind the scenes information but a new addition here is this lovely photograph of the figures themselves not just cutouts of promotional images that we've seen in the past with the B&M line but an actual fully fledged photograph of the figures in a diorama backdrop of the ruins of Scaro which <laughs> does look really cool this is taken by Paul Gibbs and he is a very very talented toy photographer online I really highly recommend you check out his Instagram I really hope this is something that we see in the future I just think it really works well and and it promotes the figures quite well instead of just having bog standard images on the back. It is a really nice little detail there and I hope that we do see this in the future. One thing to add is that the plastic that goes in front of the window is actually made a return here. As per usual the CO exclusives seem to keep that on because of it being a collector's item so I can understand why they keep that in. Opening up the box you have the return of the diorama backdrops which is also a very welcomed addition considering this is the inside of the Mavellan spaceship. You've got tons of little easter eggs as per usual which is always something I love to look and analyse at. Looking at the figures straight out of the box these are probably some of the best figures we have seen in such a long time. Okay yes we've had the Geo Martin figure that's just come out. I feel like we're eating well this year considering that this is the second character online exclusive set that we've seen this year and the contents of this set are quite good but the fact that we've got a much needed re-release as well as two almost brand new figures which is very very great you know I didn't think for a second we would ever see anything like this. Starting with the Dalek this is actually a much deserved re-release as a lot of fans have been crying for this version to have a rehaul after so many years. Originally it came out in a set called the Fourth Doctor's Adventure set which consisted on this a fourth Doctor, a Vok robot, and the Mummy. Over time, the set became quite rare to get a hold of. I was actually quite lucky to get the original set from way back when, a couple of years ago during lockdown for a very reasonable price. But this time around, there has been certain updates here and there just to differentiate from that original version, as well as adding on a few new updates. So to start off with, the actual grey that they've chose here is vastly similar to the version that we saw in the B&M line. Almost identical, but I think there are slight hints here and there just to show that it is ever so slightly different but to me it looks the same the smaller details as seen on every other Dalek toy that you probably own the dome lights are the updated mini Cooper lights that weren't seen on the original release as they just use that sort of standard dome just to represent the mini Cooper lights the eye stalk is also attached in place and it is an updated sculpt here all the detailing on the eyes such as the ring alignment is very nice and detailed with the dark blue being painted in a very nice and crisp color and just like the B&M versions the iris on the front has been printed on instead of it being molded on just like on the original versions so I kind of like that detail you've also got that little indent there which the on-screen props had the neck bin is also pretty much the same with all the detailings being in the same place such as the grating going around the neck bin and then all the rivets and rings being painted in that lovely grey the midsection is obviously the main interest of this figure with all the bombs going around the slats now from what everyone's gathered here is that this is an actual fact of brand new sculpt if you compare the original one to this one side by side you can tell that the alignment of the bombs are all in different places which gives it more of an accurate tone considering the actual prop itself didn't have the bombs all neatly folded together they were in sort of higgledy piggledy bits and bobs they were probably put on in a rush and i think it is a nice touch that they've tried to represent the prop itself the bombs themselves have just been cast in this sort of lovely red plastic with the yellow strip being painted on i think taking a look at the original version the red on there is way too glossy and the yellow just seems seems slightly too bright in my opinion. I think here it looks a lot better and it does look more accurate when comparing the colours of this to the 
actual props. I think comparing the bombs here to the on-screen counterparts, they do look quite similar than looking at the original. It just looks too glossy and horrible. I think the ones on the new updated version look so much better. The sculpts themselves I think are pretty much the same, but apart from that they all do look good. The vertical slats are slightly thinner than what we saw in the past, but again I think a lot of people assume that these were the original versions, but from what's been said online these are in fact new as well. I think the original mold got lost from way back when, so they had to go back and update the look and to be fair all more for it, it looks so much better and represents the props even better. The gun and plunger have just been cast in a gloss black with the plunger itself just being painted in a matte black. The oval in the middle is also been painted black this time around whereas on the original it was just grey colour. So moving down to the skirt, this is something that I am slightly disappointed in but it's not the end of the world. Obviously on the B&M versions the hemispheres were painted black but you had silver sort of tones over the top to sort of represent the scuff marks and everything to make them look ever so slightly more tatty. It's a shame that they didn't carry on that motif here as it would have just contrast well when you put those versions on the shelf and then you've got that same grey going along the whole skirt with no paint bleeds in sight. And then taking a look at the base, this time they've used a two-tiered version whereas on the original it was just single tiered and they've added a load of silver paints over the top to represent sort of scuff marks to make the prop look a bit dated. This is a really nice figure and it's so nice that we've got an updated version of this figure. I know this is something that fans have been desperate to get their hands on considering this Dalek alone goes for so much money online and it was not worth the price. I mean, I saw one not long ago going through about I think 150 quid. I mean, that's mad just for a single Dalek. So I'm kind of glad that it's got its re-release and there's updates to it just to represent the props even better on this new version. And now taking a look at the more interesting part of this set, which is of course the Mavellans. I never thought in a million years we'd ever see something like the Mavellans. The costumes were a bit silly. You had the really weird disco-like hair and the costumes were just hideous. I mean, they're not exactly the greatest villains of all time, but they are welcoming in my opinion. As soon as we saw the promotional images, I thought, oh, wow, these look amazing. They have been leaked a few times this year already. We've had unpainted versions go along on eBay. And then there was a leak of a photo with three Mavellans, which worried a lot of people because people just thought we were going to get a free pack. But that wasn't the case. Luckily enough, we did get something a bit more interesting with the set. But the Mavellans themselves are very welcoming. As far as I'm aware, these are both meant to represent actresses who played the Mavellans. And they are very interesting characters, considering that all of the actors and actresses who played them were of a different nationality. They weren't just another white man in a suit. So starting with Mavellum number one, this is just amazing. I think she looks super cool here. The sculpt itself is very detailed itself. They've gone with the similar sort of motif what they've done with the Joe Martin figure, where they've just dyed the plastic to represent the skin tone and then just painted all the details on, such as the eyes, the eyebrows and the lips. And here it's very nice and crisp and I think it works a lot well doing this instead of just having heavy paint over the face to hide all those details details because unfortunately it doesn't seem to work when they do apply the heavy paint over the skin. The hair itself is also nicely detailed. It's sort of like a greyish purple with the silver beads being painted along the bottom and on the front of the fringe. A very nice attention to detail. This didn't have to happen but they added it on anyway. You know they could have just easily missed it out. Then moving down to the costume, this is where all the new sculpting comes into play. The tunic, the sort of skirt or dress or whatever you want to call it and the arms are all brand new. I believe that the base figure that they've used here was in actual fact Clara Oswald that came out a few years ago and I think the sculpt itself does work well here. You've got the silver neck band and the paint job on there is extremely nice. It's very vibrant. The same silver has been applied on the boots along the top and on the back and then looking at the sort of garment that they wear there's all this lovely rigid details going along the arms, the boots and on the main body itself. Looking at the legs and the tunic underneath. This is actually a nice pearlescent white. I mean, in actual fact, taking photos of these figures was quite hard because as soon as you try to edit them, the white on these would explode and it would just be very difficult to photograph. So props to them because the costumes themselves did look very oversaturated depending on certain lighting in the story. You also have the green shoulder bands, which I believe were glow sticks in my opinion. You got parts of it depicted in silver and white and the main part being painted in green. Again, very detailed here. No paint bleeds on here whatsoever. And then looking at the belt, like I said, you've got this lovely silver finish on here with all the details such as the buckle and a little raised piece here which actually holds the gun in place if you decide to. And then you've also got the Mavellans power pack. Now this sadly isn't removable so you can't recreate the scene where the Doctor rips it out and the Mavellan just shuts down. It's cast in this black plastic with a little green and red button painted over the top which again very detailed there. And then the final detail to look at were the boots. Again the base colour is painted white with dirty washes over the top to represent 
all the dirt and sand and whatever they've been running in because, you know, the costumes pretty much got ruined by the end of the episode. But it's a nice touch nonetheless. And then taking a look at the second Mavellan quickly, all the details are pretty much the same. The only difference here is the head sculpt. And again, the details here are very nice and crisp with the skin tone being dyed into the plastic instead of being painted on. And then you've got the eyes and the eyebrows and the lips all being painted on afterwards, which is very nice and crisp. One thing I meant to mention here is the hands itself. These are in actual fact the Fugitive Doctor's hands. They do work well here, so props to them for using that. And then quickly taking a look at the figure's accessories. They both come with the Mavellum blasters, and these have just been cast in a pink plastic, with the handle part being painted grey, and the, again, they look awesome. They represent the props as seen on screen quite well, and they easily can be applied to be fitted in the Mavellum's hands. As well as that, you've also got a little notch down the side, which can actually be fitted onto the belt if you decide to pose them that way. For articulation, Starting with the Dalek, it's pretty standard. If you've owned any Dalek toy, you know what you're getting here. Head can do a full 360 turn. I can pivot up and down. There's also movement in the gun and plunger being on ball joints, so you can pose the Dalek in various ways possible. And then there's three wheels on the bottom, two standard at the back, one at the front which can spin in any direction, making the Dalek go mad and zoom anywhere you would like it to go. Then looking at Mavellans, the head can sort of turn from side to side but is hindered by the tunic, so be careful that you don't rub any of the paint off. The arms can do a full 360 turn, shoulders can also sort of slightly bend, but the glow sticks do hinder that, so just be careful that you don't try and snap anything here. The biceps can also do a 4360 turn, and the elbows can do a 4360 turn, which is awesome. The elbows can slightly bend, but not to a 90 degree angle. You've also got articulation in the hands. The waist can slightly move from side to side, but again, hindered by the costume. The legs can move forward and out to the sides, making the Mavellan do the splits. You've also got fire articulation, and then finally, some movement in the knee being able to bend at a 90 degree angle. On a whole, I think this is an amazing set. You know, I didn't think for one second we'd ever have anything like the Mavellans because Destiny of the Daleks isn't a well-loved story in the Doctor Who fandom. You know, it's personally not my cup of tea, but there you go. There's some people out there that like it. I know the toy creator himself, Al Jawar, has stated in the past that he does love the story itself. So I can sort of understand to an extent why they've released these figures. I think these characters are slightly goofy, but at the same time, they do make out to be interesting toys. This is also another enemy of the Daleks that you can add on the shelf. This also means we've also got something to add to the Season 17 shelf, as that one was quite bare. I think it's just finally nice to see something else other than just another Dalek. And also, if you feel like it, you could probably pose these with the 12th Doctor. I know the costumes were slightly different in that story, but it's a blink and you'll miss it moment, so there isn't too much difference. The Dalek itself has been crying out for a re-release ever since that first one came out way back when. It became quite rare, and a lot of people sadly missed out. I mean, I missed out back in the day, and I had to scour through eBay to try and find one for a very reasonable reasonable price. Luckily that day came and I never thought for one second we'd ever get this again and stupidly we were wrong. We ended up getting a new version and I kind of like this one more. I think the updates on this version are way more superior to the original release. This one represents one of the on-screen counterparts way better than the original one ever did. I think the only thing I would ever change is having the silver scuff marks on the hemispheres and even maybe adding the extra raised part on the neck bin, which has actually been pointed out but on Twitter by the Dalek aficionado Pridonian that this particular Dalek did in fact have that raised section. Other than that, I think it's an amazing set. These are really cool figures nonetheless and at the time of recording there's still plenty to go about so if you're hesitating to buy this set then I highly recommend you do it now before these sell out because once they're gone they're gone. They're never going to get a re-release again. These are one-offs only, so once they sell out, you're going to probably have to scour it online, such as eBay, to try and find these. The, set, the price of the set has caused a bit of controversy, but, you know, when does it not? So it's really up to you if you want to spend that 40 quid on, you know, really amazing figures, in my opinion. And there you go. That pretty much wraps up the review. If you liked what I've had to say, then, you know, like and subscribe. And hopefully we'll be seeing some more stuff come out in the near future. I mean, we've got the series coming up soon, so hopefully we'll be hearing some more news of of merchandise. Until then, stay tuned.